Okay, hello and welcome everyone to another video in our Pawn Structure 101 series brought to you by Chess.com. I am International Master Daniel Wrench. Okay, so in uh, video number three of this series, first thing I should probably tell you all real quick is that I, I had an intention to squeeze so many critical pawn structures with uh, good example games as far as theory goes into a 10 video series that may not be possible who knows maybe we'll be covering pawn structures for the rest of our life you know you just need to buckle up buttercup we could be doing a lot of videos on this pawn structure stuff okay here we go we're talking about the pan off structure one of the things that i um would like to start doing uh didn't do it in the first introduction video nor did i do it in our second video covering the minority attack but I would like to start off every uh, video with an example for you guys to think about rather than me just starting to blabber on about what the critical ideas are and what the things are you need to be able to recognize in these pawn structures. Uh, but to give you a chance to, to think about those on your own before I tell you. So before, without any further ado, go ahead and take a moment here and think about this pan off structure. Remember that whose move it is is irrelevant. Uh, and obviously this particular position itself is an impossible position because there will always be pieces on the board. But hopefully we're all big boys and we can all understand that we're not going to take this literally. We're going to see the bigger picture here and just sort of, so what I'm, what I'm asking you to evaluate in every position is this. Uh, you're looking at the pawn structure as far as what you feel the critical weaknesses are, the outpost squares, the open files, what open files you might like to create, what, what points you might like to attack, who's better in the given structure as of this moment, and finally, where you would like your pieces to be. So we're looking at pieces, we're looking at weaknesses, and we're looking at how we might think the position is going to evolve. Because every pawn structure, what makes a strong player is not just your ability to look at the pawn structure, what's in front of you, but also anticipate how you think the position is going to evolve. And more importantly, not only where your pieces need to be now, but if you're anticipating how the position is going to evolve, where do they need to be in the future? Things like that. So I'm going to take a few minutes, I would suggest, maybe three to five minutes to look at this structure. If you haven't seen it before, evaluate the pan-off structure for us. Try to develop some of those plans and things I wanted you to look at and let me know. Ba -da 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 -boo -do -do. Okay, you're back. I assume you paused the video and no more Jeopardy music. Okay, this is the pan-off structure. This is a structure that occurs commonly from the pan-off Botvinnik and the Carroll Kahn variation also occurs in uh, different variations of the Queen's Gambit and uh, probably some other openings too. Uh, a lot of positions from an English opening can transpose into pan-off structures starting on move one to c4. Uh, so we'll talk about the different opening theory here in a minute, but just looking at the given structure here, there's some critical things to recognize. Okay, The pan-off structure is a good one to do in the beginning of our series because it's a good one uh, as far as that little training method I just gave you. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this video demo from chess.com. Subscribe today to finish this video and get unlimited access to our full video library. Your membership also includes access to Chess Mentor, the most advanced interactive training tool available anywhere. You'll also get full access to the Opening Explorer, Tactics Trainer, and much, much more. So sign up today and get serious about improving your game.